Good afternoon or good morning to my old friends and new friends. I'm very happy to be invited to the Snow Leopard Network Winter Exchange 2022. Today, I'm going to introduce Snow Leopard Service and Qilin Shan National Park, China. So before we start, a big uh, self-introduction to myself. My name is Yan Lin Liu. I used to be a climber, so it's about 20 years ago. Uh, during my undergraduate, I joined uh, the university mountaineering team and climbed the snow peaks over 6,000 meters in the Tupelo Plateau. So the climbing bring me to the plateau and make me familiar with the landscape, the wildlife, and the people on that land. And I also get trained to be experienced in the field. So I'm, I'm very proud and happy to, to be a forward climber. <laughs> um, and uh, after graduate, I practice a bit uh, expedition guide. So I lead two teams to the, the mountain Kilimanjaro in Africa. I have been to the geography South Pole and, and also work on the cruising ships for several months along the uh, Antarctica Peninsula. Uh, but the identity I'm most proud of is the field biologist. I was trained as a biologist. So since my since I stepped into the Tibetan Plateau, I have been climb or work, or studied or work on the plateau for about 20 years. Um, Years ago, author Peter Fleming said, the adventure nowadays is easy to make, but difficult to justify it. And uh, Dr. George Scheller provide an option. He said, conservation provide ample justifications. So that's, uh, that's what I believe. I believe in conservation. I also believe science will help conservation. And today, I would like to share with you on five topics. I will introduce the region, the Chilean mountains, and then I will introduce briefly the protected areas within the mountain systems. And, and what, what I really want to talk about is the snow leopard service and the past efforts in this region in the past several decades. And finally, I will, would like to discuss with you all on several points for the wildlife conservation and research in this area for the future. Um, to introduce Chilean mountains, I would like to start with a poem. It's a poem. The poem <laughs> was composed by the greatest poet in China history back in 1,300 years ago. The poem said, Full moon rises above the mountains of sky with soothing light, the sea of clouds to die. The long, long wind blowing thousands of miles away past the shaded gate of jade, just files. The mountains of sky is actually the Chilean mountains. The mountains is in the northeastern corner of the Tibetan Plateau. By its location, so it's just south of one stretch of the Silk Road. Silk Road. The Silk Road connected the Han Empire of China and the Rome Empire in about 2,000 years ago. So the Silk Road was braced out more than 2,000 years. So in this sense, these mountains have witnessed the rise and fall of nomadic powers for more than 2000 years. So it's a region full of history. And it's also a complex mountain system. It's about 700,000 square kilometers. It's a big area. It's almost the same of the third uh, largest island in the world, the, the island of Brno. And this area 
encompassed two provinces. So the province in China is more or less the state, um, the state in Indian or in in the U.S. So in the south, uh, in the southern part of the mountain is Qinghai Province, and north northern part of the mountain is within the Gansu Province. The Qinghai and Gansu, these two names, will appear again and again during this talk. Um, because of its location, it, it, the, this region stands between the plateau and the deserts in the north. So it has wildlife and plants, both from the plateau and deserts. We have confirmed there are 15 membrane carnivore species in this region and 12 ungrades. So it, it makes this mountain system a multiple predator and multiple prey ecosystems. For the canine species, we have wolf, doe, Tibetan fox, and red fox. That's four species. And we have five fairy species, except for snow leopards. We have lynx, we have pilot cat, we have uh, the Chinese mountain cat, and the leopard cats. And not far away from the mountain, north of the mountain in the, in the Hesi corridor, in the desert area, we also found Asian white cats. And this region is important to snow leopards. We all know about 60% of snow leopards' habitats are within China, and Qilianshan is still important because it had been stay stable for snow leopard in the past and also stable in the future during to, um, the, the modeling. I mean, the habitats in this region would stay stable under different climate change uh, scenarios. And before 2016, there are several large nature reserves established in this region. The nature reserve in China is similar to the category of strict, uh, strictly protected areas of the U IUCN uh, uh, system. So uh, in the 1980s, there are two large areas of nature reserve was established in Gansu province. And it's not until 2002, another nature reserve, the Qinghai, Qilianshan Nature Reserve, was established in the Qinghai province. But the two nature reserves in Gansu are all national level. It's the national level uh, nature reserve. But the nature reserve in the Qinghai side is just provincial level. So it's a uh, lower level than the two in Gansu province. And it's, this nature reserve is more or less a paper reserve until 2014. Mm -hmm. um, even the nature reserve was announced and reinforced uh, in the past several decades, but illegal mining, hunting, and uh, hydroelectrical development are also serious uh, in, the, in the mountains. And in 2016, the, the central government combined the three existing nature reserves and enlarged it into a large uh, national park. A uh, national park is not new for many countries, especially Indian, uh, the, the United States, but it's new to China. So uh, ever since 19, uh, 19, 1956, uh, China built the uh, nature reserve systems and gradually increased the coverage and numbers of nature reserves, but not only, not until 2016 did China announce the first uh, five uh, national park. No, no, the first 10. So the Qilianshan National Park is one of the first 10 uh, national park pilots in China. And as to the management of the national park, it, it was 
divided into three branches, uh, more or less the same size. It's about um, 16 or 17 thousand square kilometers. It's still a big area, but it was managed by three branches and by three uh, more or less independent entity. For example, the Qinghai branch was managed by the Qinghai Qilinshan Nature Reserve Administration and supervised by the Qinghai Provincial Forestry. And the other two branch, uh, the Jiuquan, Jiuquan branch in the west and the Zhangye branch in the east, these two branch were managed uh, are managed by the previously nature reserve administrations and supervised by Gansu province of forestry. So you can understand this is one big trans border, I mean, trans province border uh, national park, but it's managed by three independent entities. So this situation. Um, make many things uh, I'm going to talk about later. Uh, <laughs> so uh, for snow leopards, as to snow leopard uh, service, the first snow leopard papers published in 1950s by Mr. Liao Yanfa. Mr. Liao worked for the Sinin Zoo in the 1970s and 1980s. So in the 1970s, he traveled around to trap and to trap all bold snow leopards all around Qinghai province. So he accumulated many information about its distribution. So he published the paper in 1985. That's the first scientific paper on snow leopards. Uh, as to the Qilin Shan, uh, in, in his paper, he said he trap 12 snow leopard individuals in this corner of Qilinshan in the winter, just one winter in 1984. And in early 1980s, when George Schaller finished his, um, his epic research on giant panda, he was appointed by, the, by, by China, the national forest, to survey snow leopards in the West. So in the 1984, 1985, and 1986, George Shallow traveled extensively in Qinghai province and Gansu province to, to find out where the snow leopards are. So he, um, he also makes surveys into the Chilean mountains. And of course, he found the um, many signs, the scrapes, um, the other spores of snow leopards in, in the Chilean mountains. But he also mentioned that in 1980s, non-government officers are familiar of the concepts of conservation. So nobody talked about wildlife conservation in that time. And, and many herders, not, not just herders, but officers, the, um, the policemen, they all have guns, the people hunt wildlife. Um, that's the situation back in 1980s. And in the following two decades, I mean, from the, the mid 1980s to 2008 or 2009, there are almost no snow leopard surveys in Chilean mountains. Um, so in the spring of 2008, the global snow leopard summits was held in Beijing so that snow leopard summit changed the, the uh, snow leopard survey and research landscape in China. So after that summit, the Beijing Forest University, they start to work on snow leopards in Chilean mountains. And uh, this young lady, you all know, um, <laughs> Justin Alexander, she was a graduate student uh, of BFU, the Beijing Four University, about 10 years ago. So he worked on her, her, uh, her PhD thesis in Chile Mountains in the Gansu site. So 
in the spring of two thousand, in the winter of two thousand thirteen, uh, she installed sixty camera traps in an area of about four hundred and eighty square kilometers, and that's the first rigorous uh, snow leopard population estimates in Chile Mountains, and and uh, it's also for me too difficult to say. It's still the only one. The on, it is still the only uh, rigorous population estimates in this area. Um, and the BFU, I mean the, the Beijing Four University, uh, uh, have Eric uh, Justin work on the the, the Eastern uh, Nature Reserve, but they also expand their survey efforts to the Western. Um, nature reserve, the other nature reserve, the Yanchuan nature reserve. So they um, carry out camera trap surveys in one mountain ranges of this nature reserve in about an area about 400 square kilometers. And according to the paper or reports, I know um, the, the, the BFU staff, they identified snow leopards but, uh, and also have uh, tested uh, estimates, but I, I haven't seen the detailed numbers. And according to the survey in this one site, uh, BFU team estimates it's about 150 snow leopards, I mean, adult uh, individuals live in this nature reserve. And that's the only available snow leopard population for this large area so far. Um, and uh, uh, there's, uh, for, for each slide, I would label the team who work on this area. For example, in these slides, I have BFU, that stands for uh, that university, and also have the EBC. It's um, an NGO uh, that, uh, established by a professor from the BFU. Um, the university and the NGO, they work closely uh, on many sites. And in the Qinghai site, the first snow lab surveys happened in June 2014. Uh, that's 30 years after George Scheller visited this corner. So in that summer, I traveled with George into this area and we spent two weeks looking for uh, snow level size. We didn't install any camera traps. We just travel around, hike up and down into the mountain, up to the ridges and look for snow level size. We did find many and we also spot many blue sheep, um, the, um, the white lip deers. So, the information, I mean, the important thing is we confirm they are still uh, frequently activated of snow leopards in this corner. So this corner, George Shallow visited in the winter of 1984. And after 30 years, he revisited this area and still found a lot of um, signs of snow leopards. And this is the, the river run through that area. And back in 1984, George visited this area in winter. So he can easily cross the, the river to the north side of the mountains. But when we visit this area in 2014, it's the, the early summer and the river is high, but George was determined to cross the river. So I put on, the, the rain jacket, not rain jackets, the, the water uh, pants, and try to cross the river with him. But the river looks low, but the power is enormous. I mean, the, the floods almost wash us away. So I try my best to pull him out of the river. So <laughs> at the moment, I was so scared. I mean, if I join, if I I let George John in this river. I literally John, one of the greatest naturalists in 20th centuries. I would be the greatest criminal in snow leopard conservation history.
And during that service, during that trip, we also visited an abandoned priest camp deep in the mountains. And, and, and back in 1984, George spent nights in this area. There are a lot of people working here day and night to dig sulfur mines. So it's also a symbol, a symbol of history. It stands that it indicates that there used to be heavy human disturbance deep in the mountains, even if it's so arid. And in the very same year of 2014, I mean, soon after we finished the survey, the ecological impacts of mining was imposed and attracts international attentions. The coal mining in Chilean Shan uh, has damaged a lot of meadows and the, the things was just scaring. So when, when the ecological impacts of mining was reported by uh, national and international uh, medias, the top, the, the top leaders in China decided to cram down almost all of the mining and hydroelectrical developments in Chilean mountains. And, and in the following two years, I mean, from 2014 to 2016, uh, most of the mines were, were ordered to stop and to reorganize. And this decision have paved the road to the Chilean Shan National Park announced in 2016. And since then, I mean, since 2014, I have been lucky to join the many field service. I got into the Chilean mountains by car or on foot or even by boat. I love the, the field journeys uh, in this region as I, I believe uh, all of you will have fun as <laughs> uh, will enjoy the wide as me. And uh, so in, in 2016, the Chilean National Park was announced. And also the snow leopards, the threatened status of snow leopards were downgraded by the IUCN. You know, snow leopards are now vulnerable, but not a, a threatened, a, a endangered. So the past uh, initiatives was also announced in 2000. Uh, 15. So in the past five years, uh, there are a lot of uh, survey efforts going on in um, within the National Park. So I would like to introduce these efforts one by one. Um, so uh, this slide shows um, all the efforts uh, in the past five years. So uh, in the Qinghai site, in the Qinghai site, um, in 19, uh, in 2017, we have a team, uh, the CAF team, the Chinese Academy of Forestry. They carry out uh, the first round of camera chatting in the Chilean, uh, in the Qinghai branch. And then in 2018 and 2019, the BFU team continue uh, the camera chatting in the Qinghai site. And, um, so from 2017 to 2018 is also, is also uh, the time I joined the field service in the Qinghai. Um, and then from 2000, uh, 2020, uh, the Qinghai branch uh, provide funding uh, and support three teams to carry out snow leopard service in the Eastern, Central and Western parts. So that's what happened in the Qinghai sites. And in the Gansu sites, uh, we know the BFU and the EBC team start working in the Jiuquan branch since about 2013. And then they have uh, surveys um, in this era. Um, but, and they, and they expand, expand their survey efforts in around 2019. Um, and then uh, uh, since this year, the PKU team step in and now uh, in charge of this, this, uh, the parts service in the Jiuquan branch. And in the Eastern uh, Zhangye branch um, from 2019 to 2020, uh, 
um, the Institute of Geology of the China Academy of Science. They work with the Zhang Yi branch to analysis the data. And from 2020, 2021, the WWF and the TSN Foundation, they collaborate with the, uh, the Zhang Yi branch to continue the past efforts. So that's the uh, general uh, uh, general int introduce uh, for the past efforts. So I would like to introduce one by one. Um, so in 2017, the CAF team have the first round of surveys. They brace out more than 150 camera traps in this area, but uh, separate in several sites. You see the the, the, the lattice, the A, B, C, D, the full, um, the full patches. So we uh, separate um, camera chefs in the full, um, the, the, the patches. And sadly, this Soviets uh, have published one paper, but only on the species diversity. And the, the images of snow leopards was not good. The quality is low. So the, um, Individual identification is not good and yield non density estimations. Um, and then after, after the, the, the first long survey by the CAF, um, the Qinghai branch decided to invite three teams uh, work on three parts. So this is in the eastern parts. So the eastern parts is about 1,500 square kilometers. It placed almost one, it installed almost 100 stations, uh, 100 camera traps. They did identify uh, more than 24 adult snow leopards and also estimate the densities. It, the density is quite low, it's about 1, 0, 1, 5, 0 0.15 to 0 0.44 individuals per 100 square kilometers. The density is a bit low and I am not sure the density estimation is using the uh, SCCR model. It might just uh, um, estimate from the individuals identified and the total uh, survey area. So, so, so in the eastern part, we have many data, we spend time, but still, you don't have the rigorous. Uh, Population estimates. And what about the, the center part in Qinghai? Um, so after the CAF, the, another team, the Northwestern Institute of Polar Biologists team, they continue the camera trap survey in the center part. Um, altogether, they place out a lot of uh, camera trap stations. It's about, it's almost 240 stations and they identified the, uh, 63 snow leopard individuals. But again, uh, these efforts cannot yield rigor, uh, rigorous uh, population estimates. And how about the Western part? Um, the Sanshui team uh, continued the snow leopard trap, uh, camera trapping um, until this year, and they placed out 148 camera traps in an area over 3,000 square kilometers and 44 snow leopards identified. And again, and again, the data can be analysis with the, uh, the, um, the marking recapture model. So it just simply divided the number, the, the snow leopard identifies and, and areas to get the, um, the, the, the naive density. And in the same area, the PKU team, that's the team I did join on. Um, so in, in the last winter, we restart uh, a camera trapping for this population densities uh, in the area about 1,500 square kilometers. We um, set up 91 camera traps and we have already got the first round data, but the um, uh, individual identification is still going on. So no data, no population estimates available so far. 
And that's what happened in the Qinghai site. And how about the Gansu site? Um, so in the Gansu site, do you still remember we have two branches? So this is the Western branch, the Jiuquan branch. Um, it's a large area. It have, um, uh, have, have uh, several mountain ranges. So the BFU and EBC team, they installed and maintained the camera traps uh, along the mountain ranges. Um, the coverage is quite good. We have almost 180 stations and placed out in the four sub-regions. And I am, I am, and, but, but the data, the data is only partially uh, processed and the um, snow leopard individuals never been identified. So it's not until last month, uh, uh, I worked with uh, several friends uh, from EBC, uh, formerly EBC staff, uh, including Yibin and Yibo. We worked together to process the data and try to identify the individuals uh, for these data sets. Um, the data sets uh, looks promising. We have um, 683 independent detections. In my year, some good um, results, but we'll see. And, and this year, um, the Jiu Chuan branch decided to stop the collaboration with BFU team but uh, start the collaboration with the PKU team, which I was uh, one of the team. And so uh, we redesigned um, the service uh, following the past guidelines. Um, uh, <clears throat> so we pick seven survey sites um, to, and uh, place out over 200 camera chaps. So we have uh, two sites in high density, uh, high density shelter and three medium uh, densities and two low. So all together, um, we have uh, seven sites and each site has about a uh, cover about 25, uh, five kilometers by five kilometers grids. So the, the data will be recovered um, in May to June next year so i'm looking forward you have the results by the snow level date next year and how about the other branch the Zhang Ye branch so from 2019 to 2020 um the the, the branch they carry out the, the camera trapping and they collaborate with um Institute of Urology team to analyze the, analysis the data. So they have processed the data and published one paper, introduced the species, um, species diversity, the occupancy rates of different species for this area. Uh, but I communicate with the author, they don't have the plans to do snow leopard uh, individual identifications. So I'm not sure they whether there would be population estimates uh, for this area. But since last year, the WWF team and the Tison Foundation team, they worked together to redesign a survey efforts. They also follow the past guidelines and they carry out the first round of interview-based occupancy uh, modeling and then uh, pick A sites uh, to to estimate the uh, estimated the densities. So they have uh, three sites among the high density strata and four in the medium the density and one in the low. So altogether, they have 151 stations. Um, they have already got the first wrong data sets uh, this summer. And, and, and at present and, and now, they're working on the um, individual identifications. I'm, I'm expecting the results. And the Tizen Foundation, it's, an, it's, it's a foundation established by one of the IT giants uh, in China. Uh, you may be familiar with its uh, penguin um, uh, trademark. Um, the the Tizen company, they have powerful AI capacities. So, 
the the TF the Tison Foundation they help develop uh, AI systems so they can manage the data they can uh, uh, identify species automatically and they all, they all, it is said that they also develop the the models for uh, individual and identifications um, and the data from the Zhangye branch uh, are testing uh, uh, I mean the system are testing their models uh, with the, the data from the Zhangye branch so I am very looking forward uh, to the performance of the AI system and and the Tizen company is also uh, plans to promote uh, their AI system uh, for snow leopard groups in China and also snow leopard groups uh, internationally. So that's uh, all of the, the snow leopard survey efforts I know uh, in the Chilean mountains. So to summary the surveys in this era, uh, we, do, we do have a lot of data. We do have a lot of efforts um, being spent to get the population estimates. Uh, but the results doesn't look promising. Um, for all the three branches, uh, they all manage the efforts, the, manage the service um, for the top-down uh, regulation. Uh, but each branches has its own plans and, and, and a lack of coordination. Um, so that's the that's I feel a pity uh, for this region because um, the Mongolian started uh, the past efforts at the same year of the Chilean mountains in 2017. And the, we all know Mongolian have finished their past efforts in estimate populations last year in 2021. But uh, for Chilean mountains, we spent five years. We have many teams working on this area, but we still can't get the, the, the one numbers for this region, for the park. So I think is in many ways we can improve it. Um, so for next year, for 2023, we expected the past results from the Jiuquan branch and Zhangye branch because the two branches in Gansu province, we all follow the, the past guidelines. So the data should be promising. And as to the Qinghai sites, um, the three teams in Qinghai sites, uh, <clears throat> their service might bios in the high density uh, habitats. So it needs carefully uh, inspection. It might need some a, a bit more so it's in low density uh, habitats and to produce the better population estimates. So, but, uh, but we, we still have chance. Um, the three teams, uh, I, as to I know, at least two teams will continue their service in the Qinghai sites. Um, so I hope after five years of snow leopard survey efforts for the national park, we can finally get the first uh, baseline uh, data for snow leopard populations for the whole national park next year. Okay, that's the uh, uh, my introduction uh, introduction to the to the survey efforts and this region. And the following uh, my thoughts is maybe some wild uh, thinking, wild dreaming. Um, so for the future, in, in this mountain, as I myself already spent, uh, spent eight years, I would like to continue my work in this region uh, with uh, partners, friends, uh, because it's such a, a lovely place. So my, my first idea is uh, how about we mapping, we mapping out the status of snow leopards and all other carnivores for this uh, large landscapes. Um, that would be interesting. If we produce all these maps, they would be the, the best uh, baseline data for the landscape level conservation in this region. In this 700,000 uh, 700, square kilometers of mountain systems. 
Um, and is it possible? I think it's possible. It just takes time and uh, and in in, in efforts, because what I see and what happens in the island of uh, uh, island of Kalimantan in the Southeast Asia, that big island of the same size of the Chilean mountains, um, the, uh, the, the, the scientific institute from German have worked with collaborators to produce such data sets for the 24, 25 carnivore species for the mountains. So I think based on the uh, camera champion data available so far, at least we, we are already possible to produce, to mapping the carnival uh, distributions and densities uh, within the, the, the national park. And combined with more data uh, inputs, we may try to mapping uh, carnivals in the whole region. And and the second uh, thoughts is that we can try uh, some, uh, a further research, we tried. We already used camera traps, and people have tried the the the, 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 the scat DNAs. And and last winter, we already tried to try the satellite, uh, the uh, the radio. Come on, <laughs> the satellite coloring. We have put colors on several snow lab individuals, so we have uh, more advanced. Uh, 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 methods or tours to understand how the snow leopards and other carnivores respond to the human disturbance and uh, and climate change. But this is what I uh, used to do. What I what I use what I do about ten years ago in another region of Qinghai, in the southern Qinghai, the source region of the Yangtze River. We um, at that time I worked with Sanshui. I worked for a Sanshui Conservation Center, and we collaborate with the Panthera uh, and Peking University. We try uh, multiple carnival uh, ecology projects. We try to initiate a long-term ecological uh, research project there, like what happened in the south, uh, um, in the Tos Mountains in southern uh, Mongolia. Um, this area will provide more opportunities because we have uh, more diverse uh, carnivores. We not only have snow leopards, we also have bears, lynx, and those and wolves. So it will be interesting to observe the interactions uh, among these uh, carnivores and their reactions to the human disturbance. And my third interest is that um, I would like to understand how the wildlife changed in the past 100 years, because we observe uh, the obvious uh, range contraction uh, from 1950s to about 2000. And then gradually the wildlife are recovering, uh, but some are recovering faster, and, but some are recovering very slow. For example, a snow leopard might be the one, might be the, the carnivore species uh, it's more uh, resilient, it's more adapted, and we can find snow leopard everywhere in these mountains. But to those, the, the Asian white dog, it recover very slow. Um, there are still only a few uh, those living in these mountains, and most of them are isolated, uh, place remote area without people. So it will be interesting to uh, to, to, to mapping the wildlife uh, distributions uh, in, in, in different time periods. So uh, to, <laughs> to wrap up, so today I have talked about the five topics. So the mountains, it's big and it's also rich in nature and culture and history. And uh, I have introduced uh, the protected areas for this region. So before 2016, we have several nature reserves, but now we have one big national park, but the park was divided into three uh, branches. Uh, before 2016, we have many surveys, but only one 
uh, population uh, estimates. Um, and in the past five years, there are a lot of going on, but we still need to uh, combine the data to produce uh, a, a reasonable uh, population estimates for the national park. And for the future to this area, I still interested in the science for conservation for snow leopards and other carnivores. It would be interesting to spend uh, my next uh, 10 or 20 years in this region. Uh, I'm, I'm thinking after 20 years, I'm, maybe I'm old enough to retire and satisfied. Okay, uh, that's my talk. And thanks to all for your all, uh, patience and uh, welcome for questions. Awesome, thank you, Yan Lin. Um, yeah, so now is the questions uh, part of today's exchange. So if you wanna type them in the chat, I'll read them out for Yan Lin to answer. Or if you wanna ask them yourself, um, while we wait for some more questions to come in, just do a quick round of introductions. We've obviously got Dr. Yan Lin Liu, who is the director of the Chinese Field Conservation Alliance. We're also joined today by Justine and Raki from SLT and SLN. And our translator today is Shahida. And finally, there is me, intern at uh, Snow Leopard Trust. So, yeah, we'll move on to the questions now. The first one is from Justine. She's wondering, the survey you shared was in protected areas. Are there suitable habitats outside protected areas? Any info on these areas? Yes, um, uh, there's, there's a lot of uh, habitats out of the national park. I mean, uh, this year, uh, the, the BFU team published a paper, a paper on the habitats modeling um, for this area. And we can see there are many habitats uh, available for snow leopards and they did have snow leopards. Um, and, but there are few surveys in that area. Uh, I only know uh, just one site in the eastern, uh, eastern edge of this region was surveyed by camera trap and another uh, region was surveyed by a photographer. He, uh, he was one of the best wildlife photographer in China, he even win the, uh, the, the, the BBC award for wildlife. <laughs> but he himself uh, installed a lot of camera traps uh, for his own interest, but uh, none of us see his data. So they are, they're indeed, and then field surveys. Cool. Next question from Aliana. Do you know if there's a plan to apply the IUCN category management standards to national parks in China moving forward and report their IUCN categories and boundaries to the world database of protected areas? Yeah, um, I... The, 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 the national park in China, I think it's uh, the strictly protected area, uh, the equally uh, the strictly protected area uh, of the IUCN category. And I don't think we update the boundaries to the world database of protected area. I don't think so, but uh, I haven't checked. You might try. Okay, uh, next question from Yishuan. Hello, your sharing is very informative and inspiring. I was wondering, it seems like a lot of previous camera trapping surveys did not follow the standardized sampling method, which entailed many raw data along with the survey effort going to waste. Will the team try to work out a way to recycle those data and integrate them into the new project? Uh, there's a second question, so I'll read that one out after. Uh, yeah, uh, thanks to the question, because Yi Yixuan has now worked for EBC. Uh, she is also familiar with this area. Yeah, indeed, there are a lot of efforts uh, kind of wasted. Um, but th that's what I expected. I expected, because I'm not a, a good model, I, I'm, I don't know much about the modeling, but I think uh, 
the modeling could help to maximize the, the usefulness of all these data. Um, I, I still remember, I mean, what the, what the, the past guidelines said, the available surveys uh, are still useful. You just need to add some, uh, uh, some more surveys in, in, in an unsurveyed area, we can produce uh, better estimates. I mean, if, we, if, if our purpose, our goals are to produce uh, that population estimates, but uh, I mean, uh, except for the, the population estimates, uh, the, 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 the existing surveys can do a lot of many other things. Uh, they can provide baseline information for locally and to help the, the management, that would be useful. And what's the top priority? <laughs> um, I think in China, uh, the snow leopards uh, distributed mostly in Western China, where there are few people, uh, the human populations are low, um, and the habitat is more or less uh, uh, intact. So, uh, and we also have lots a uh, large area of nature reserves, that would be a nice thing, is uh, we have a nice uh, nature reserve coverage um, on the snow leopard habitats. So a uh, survey to understand the baselines uh, would be useful, but uh, might not be the top priority because people always uh, doubt about, about it. We don't need to know the exact numbers of snow leopards for conservation. We can do conservation without such uh, detailed information. And in some sense, this is true. Um, so I think the top priorities for now is to uh, the, the capacity building. We really uh, help the, uh, the nature reserve uh, staffs, the, I mean, the local staffs, uh, they can uh, they understand how to do the survey and how to do the conservation. That would be uh, very useful because in, in for the nature reserves in, in Western China, snow leopards might not be the top priority. They have a lot of other things to worry about. They worry about the illegal inf infrastation uh, development because that's what the uh, central government uh, uh, look over their shoulders. Um, it's not allowed illegal development. It's not allowed um, um, road building in, in central area. So, so I, I mean, uh, in in insert to this question, I think the top priority is to change the people. I mean, make the the local staffs can do snow leopard things. Cool. Uh, a couple questions from Justine. She's asking, do we know why the data are not analyzed with SCR? And does mining still take place within the Keelan Mountains? Yeah, um, so that's a, a nice question. That's a good question. I mean, to ask ourselves why all this data just stay there for years and without analysis. Um, so some something, some information I know, I know the sensory team uh, have uh, invest a lot of people, uh, volunteers or staffs to work on the data. So they did analyze data, uh, process the data, they do the uh, individual identifications, but the design is not good. So when they analyze the data, they find it not uh, meet the, the hypothesis of the closed population. So it's not possible to continue uh, with the SAR. And for the, for the other team, as I know, is the lack of uh, hands. They have not, they do not have enough people, in, enough staff to work on the, uh, the ID, this, this no lab ID. So, so the data just sit there and waiting for people. <laughs> Um, so this is one thing. And the other thing is, uh, I, I mean, look at the, the shape of the national park. You might realize it's a long, thin uh, national park. So if, we, if you do snow leopard surveys in the Qinghai side, in the Gansu side, 
So just uh, some sewage will be in a narrow thin area. Uh, so it would be, I guess it would be the best to combine all this data together and, and, uh, and to see what the potential uh, and what, what it can do. But uh, sadly, we don't have such leading scientists can some of such collaboration. Uh, we, we have different projects, um, we have different teams, but each teams are working on their own data. I, I think it still needs time and needs some people to, to, to bring the, 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 the groups together. Um, yes, I will also ask, maybe I can do it. Can you do it? Uh, no. Um, I maybe I'm not that qualified. I stand I spend times in this area, but uh, I still not that important. So I could raise the question. I could uh, talk about it, but but it still needs uh, more talking, more communication. So in mining, uh, mining, there yes, there are still mining in the Chilean mountains. Uh, the, uh, the the national own uh, mining. Uh, uh, corporations they're still working on coal mining, uh, and, but uh, most of the the small scale mining, the private mining, are all, all stop. Uh, that's a good thing for these mountains um, uh, because the, uh, uh, the the central government, the, the environmental uh, uh, environmental, uh, let's say the uh, that we have another departments in charge of the. The civilians of the illegal use of lands uh, within the nature reserve use the, 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 the satellite images. Uh, so the illegal mining has been quite good to control. Grand. Uh, next question is from Aliana, who is asking, are there any plans for future studies to look at what effect feral dogs or poorly trained livestock dogs might have on wild carnivores in any aspect, whether that's behavioral disease, et cetera. Yes, uh, there are some plans. And um, in the past three years, I have worked, I have worked on the those survey projects, uh, try to find out the distribution and numbers of the those in the Qinghai sites. And in this year, uh, we work with the, uh, the Jiuquan branch in the Western branch of Gansu province try to also find out the distribution and numbers of the uh, the, the, uh, the the feral dogs. Oh, I, I thought you were talking about the dose. Uh, feral dogs problem, no, I don't heard about any uh, studies on the feral dogs. And the situation of feral dogs in Chilean Shan is not that uh, serious. The feral dog issue is more uh, complicated and serious in southern Qinghai and um, the, the headwaters of the Yangtze, the Yellow and Mekong, uh, because there are more Tibetan people and more monasteries who could uh, provide uh, supplementary food for the feral dogs. So there would be a worse situation there. But in Chile Mountains, it's not that serious. But uh, the answer is no, I don't heard of any uh, studies. Okay. Uh, next question is from Chunye. She's asking, could you share some insights on Sun Leopard unusual encounters in China? Um, let, me, let me think. Uh, I mean, personally, I just uh, spot snow leopards for three or four times in the past 10 years. So I'm not a good person to answer these questions. Um, I think I don't think there are any unusual encounter. I know the news talk about snow leopards marching into urban area in southern Qinghai, get close to, to the human settlements. I think it's still, uh, still normal. The snow leopards uh, roaming around to find new uh, territories, ter territories. That's still normal. Cool. So if you have any more questions, send them in. Okay. I have a question as well. Oh, sorry, Alec. 
in um, Yangling. So then in terms of pause at the national level, do you think there are going to be some work towards that? I know for China, it's probably best to go province by province, um, but you talked about pause for the, uh, nat the national park. What about for Gansu province or Qinghai province? Um, I mean, my feeling is that uh, the forest, uh, I mean, the, the, the governments, the forest departments, they don't really care about the past. <laughs> uh, because the government have in invested so many resources uh, on the nature reserve and they have they have do their parts, I, I guess, in their feeling. Um, and the only, uh, not, maybe not the only, but a few organizations who work hard on pushing the past forward in China, I think it's the WWF China office, uh, so they now they pick the Chilean mountains as a sample. They are working hard to push it forward uh, and then make it as a sample and then upgrade it to the national level. But so far, there's no lab teams. Uh, I don't think they talk much, they don't talk much about the past. Um, uh, that may be unfair to, to China's no lab networks. Uh, the networks also do a lot of uh, training, information sharing, yeah. Thanks, I hope, yeah, I hope we can get China to an estimate from China though for the global population estimate, but yeah, I'm sure it'll come through. Yeah, um, I think in a, there are two, two or three uh, regions uh, It's quite promising in China. So Chilean mountains area would be one, and the second is the Southern Qinghai, the uh, Sanjiang Yuan region. Uh, a lot of organizations already been working there. And there's one more area in the Eastern Tibetan Plateau, uh, close to or among the panda habitats. They have uh, many small nature reserves for pandas connected. So they, they, they all have good uh, camera trapping uh, monitoring. So that region, uh, I think could be the third uh, area to produce a regional scale uh, uh, population estimate. Brand. Uh, another question from Yi Xuan. She's asking, based on your observation and experience, is the national park system in China actually taking its effect since the idea was introduced nationwide? Are there recent actions taken in carrying out plans? For example, enhancing capacity training, survey efforts, and enforcing regulations. <laughs> um, let me see. I think uh, it works because um, the National Park, I mean, as to the effect, it, usefulness of the national park system in total, I don't have the information, but as to the Chilean Shan National Park, I think it works because, because we, we can see there's no mining and most of the mining will stop uh, within the national park. And we can see the livestock uh, were reduced within the national park but that would be another complicated uh, problem, uh, questions. Uh, and also a lot of money coming in uh, to support the, the baseline survey, uh, some research and also capacity building. Um, I think that was all useful. Uh, uh, but uh, we, we, need, we need to, uh, I mean, understand uh, between different sectors. We need to uh, think uh, in the following of the thinking of the government agencies. They have another kind of thinking. I mean, uh, compared to the government's thinking, I think uh, the thinking of man, as like people like me, is more narrowed. It we just focus on the wildlife. So the uh, the government think about more things. Um, but the communication between uh, the research institutes and the NGOs and the governments uh, need to be 
uh, more frequent and more effective. So there are a lot of chance because the, the, the national mark system, in my uh, theory, is still open and it's still allowed for exploring. So how to use and how to build and how to shape the system is still unwritten. <laughs> awesome. Um, I think we'll slowly start to move towards the end of the session. So if anyone has any final questions, please send them through. Nishwan, please, if you want to type it in the chat. <laughs> I think you should just make fun of me. Why, why snow leopards? <laughs> um, I mean, I used to be a, a, a Tibetan donkey man and I turned out to work on snow leopards. I don't know. <laughs> it's just there's a chance. I get a chance to work on it. But of course, it's, uh, it's wonderful to be in the field and also attracting, I mean, to find out their situation. Cool. Uh, uh, but yeah, thank you, Yen for your presentation. It was really interesting. Um, and uh, the last little section on the personal thoughts was a unique little touch that we've not had yet. So thank you for that. So next week, we're looking at snow leopards in Russia. And the week after, we'll be looking at snow leopards in Kyrgyzstan. Um, those two sessions will be hosted by my co-intern, Medina. Uh, but yeah, other than that, uh, thank you again, Yan Lin. Thank you, Raki and Justine, for organizing this. And thank you, Shahida, for the interpretation. Um, we'll see you guys next week. Goodbye. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, thank you Alex, listening. for being a lovely host for the first three sessions. Much appreciated. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs>